Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Recently one of the denizens of my Discord, JM Studios, took an interest in flyback boosters and I decided to, during a live stream, discuss how to use flyback boosters effectively and concocted this. We have two flyback boosters on a super heavy core and so super heavy core from SpaceX which will launch the Starship but no Starship on top in this case. We'll talk about that. And then we have these boosters that will fly back to our launch site. And each of these have nine of the Raptor engines. And the Super Heavy core now doesn't have its outer ring of 20 Raptor engines. It only has its center engines. And basically it's outsourced those other engines to the boosters. And we are going to see how much capacity this has and also discuss how best to use flyback boosters. So, so far on my channel I've been talking about fly forward boosters a lot with the Orion carrier plane and the reason for that is because those allow your upper stage to do less work, right? Uh, they get to a much higher speed, they land downrange as they need to, uh, and then your upper stage can be trimmer and not have to do as much work. Flyback boosters don't really help that much uh, because they can only get so far before they have to fly back unless you reserve some fuel for the engines to do a boost back. But if you do that, then there's a point where it's better to just use a Falcon 9-ish system. Falcon 9 just has the regular stage without the wings and the landing gear uh, do a boost back and then land. Uh, the benefit to this is that you don't have to reserve as much fuel, but if ultimately you get so far that you do need to reserve so much fuel, then the added wings and landing gear will make the Falcon 9 system better. So what we want to do is uh, have flyback boosters that don't need to reserve fuel. And that is the goal here, but then they don't give as much benefit to the core or the sustainer or whatever you want to call the second stage. Though this is not really a second stage, it will light on the ground. And we have no upper stage to it. There is no starship. It is just a payload on top. And during testing, I barely got 125 tons to orbit, which is not bad when you think about it. Uh, so 125 tons to orbit uh, with this system. And uh, the reason they're mounted off to the side here is because I want to turn the Super Heavy into a shuttle. Yes. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about that later. Obviously, we're not doing that right now. But I'm going to turn the Super Heavy into a shuttle and... It will be a big shuttle. Uh, it will be heavier than the Orion carrier plane, which is rough too. And we will see how that goes. It will need to have a very heavy wing, and that will cut into the payload capacity. But then again, if the wing is like 55 tons or something, uh, you know, all the other stuff, the landing gear, the wing, is 55 tons, we still have a 70 ton payload on top. So it's not that bad. Anyway. But we'll broach that subject later. For now, today, we are talking about how best to bring these flyback boosters back without using too much of the fuel. And so we're going to bring this out to the pad and we are going to examine that situation. Okay, so here we go. I've called this the SBF. Uh, that stands for should be fun. That was just what I came up with during a live stream. We don't have any launch clubs, so we should probably begin. So, ignition. We do have quite a sidestep. So that's 31 Raptor engines, 13 on the core and 9 on each booster. The boosters are very similar to my old Unix rocket. Uh, that was actually somewhat larger. We might replace them with that because, well, I had sort of already made those for this purpose. But I wanted to make sure that we had the masses right, so I'm using all procedural parts, you know, and procedural wings to make sure there's no question that we're not, like, cheating anything. These are not balloon tanks, they're aluminum lithium tanks, which might be a little bit light, but the wings have, uh, you know, their full mass as space plane wings. That, right? They do have some fuel in, but they're probably not necessary. Uh, that was reserved for the RCS system, but we do have residuals here, so we probably don't need to have that reserve. We can just use the residuals from the main tank. 
or we could imagine some sort of header tank kind of thing. So we are of course going steeper. It's actually necessary to not go too far away from code grade because otherwise you get too much drag and our goal is to get an apoapsis above 60 kilometers and really as far up as possible but not too far away from the cape horizontally. Well, that's 60. So we switch to one, get RCS ready, and throttle down to. And if we do this quickly enough, we won't deviate too much from prograde. If we take too long, we will deviate very far from prograde. It's necessary to throttle down, of course, because the RCS units will start being used as the forward thrust, and we don't want that. So 33 meters per second equivalent for the Raptor engines we've got with the residuals. And then the rest is the amount that I put in the wings. If we had jet engines on here because you expected to get these going further out, then you would just have the methane in the wings and hopefully use a methane jet engine. Or you could put kerosene in the wings for the jet engines. And that's very normal for a plane. That's if you want it to go further out. So there's sort of stages to this. There's this where we're not going to try to do any sort of boost back. We're just going to try and glide back directly. So this is about the limit for that. And then the next level up is if you carry jet engines. And then you'll have to have the kerosene in the wing or something like that. Jet engines are obviously an extra mass. But even the wings plus gear plus jet engines might not be as heavy as the reserve fuel you need to return to launch site. Um, that reserve fuel is quite heavy. And then, of course, the third option is just fly forward. And in that case, you don't have to worry about coming back. And so you can just glide forward to some other location. So here we want to actually roll around. And that is so that we don't pull negative Gs when we come out of the dive. And because of the way this is going to work, I'm going to switch to atmospheric autopilot instead after doing that. And we're going to try and pitch up a little bit. And it'd be good to have the pitch info to make sure we're not doing too much. The sooner we pitch up, the better. But we have to worry about the g-forces and how much we want this airframe to take in that respect. If there's anything that needs to be heat shielded, it'll be the nose. That was a little bit suboptimal. I'd like to... Uh, I was being kind on the G-forces. I'd like to be at like 10 kilometers after that. We're going to lose all of the supersonic velocity pretty quickly because of the drag, but then we'll hang on to the subsonic velocity pretty well. I'm going to use landing guidance here, show landing predictions, and enter... Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to pick the target for the shuttle landing facility. And then we're going to get a distance here to it, and I'm going to turn off the RCS. We could actually use the RCS forward here and just dump the fuel like that. The good thing about this is because it's an empty body, we don't need that much wing. And the wing will be placed pretty far back because of the mass of the engines being the main mass of the flyback booster. The other flyback booster just disintegrated. We would like, of course, the RCS to run on the same thing as the actual propellants in the body, but if you can't swing that, then of course we could just have these tanks, or if you want to put some tank in the gap here uh, that would feed the RCS, it can use whatever fuel is necessary. I think about 180 meters per second seems good for this. Or its glide. Let me just turn off the RCS to see how much actual thrust it's giving us.
Well, since we're not doing a boost back, I'll just leave it be like that. I think we have enough. In a pinch, we can just use the one engine and the remaining fuel, but we'd like not to do that. But then again, it forced residuals on us, so... And we are carrying the fuel. We could probably glide further if we weren't carrying the stuff in the wings. Yeah, we're a little bit further out than usual. I once again find myself contemplating the regular KSC runway instead of the shuttle runway. But uh, I didn't put drag chutes on here. And uh, regular KSC runway is short. I think we'll go for it though. We did take off from the KSC pad after all, so technically it's closer to return to launch site. Short wing though, we need to be careful about the stall speed. It's not using a lot of pitch authority right now, but then you'll suddenly find that you can't pull up. Okay, please slow down. <laughs> During the live stream, somebody pointed out that I should have had a drag shoot because we also line it at the KSC runway there. We did overshoot that time, but having that experience, I've done it a little bit better this time. So that's that's basically how I would do flyback boosters, thereby not reserving too much fuel. And in fact, we didn't use any of the fuel in the wings. That was just hindering us. Uh, we could have dumped that and we'd be better off. We were just using the residuals in here, and even then we didn't use that much of it. So alright, well, now we have to see about that cargo capacity to lower orbit, orbit, right? So I'm going to try and do it as similar as possible to the previous launch, and then we'll bring the core up to orbit and see how that goes. So here we go, SASOM, throttle is up, ignition. you get much better efficiency if you had the flyback boosters on the sides, but again, we have future plans. So hopefully if it's the same, our apoapsis will be 62-ish kilometers. I've gone a little bit different already this time, though. Well, 64. Well, it's certainly not more horizontal than last time. Steeper, if anything. So that wouldn't help us get to orbit any better, is the point. We could, of course, have thought of using the vacuum engines, but it's tough to cluster them. And we needed 13 of these. In fact, as it is, we're underpowered here. We might want a couple of boost engines on the side opposite the flyback boosters, just to keep things balanced a little bit better on launch. Okay, fairing separation. We'll throw all down for G-forces here. Okay, we are in orbit 271 by 164. And we have 92 meters per second left, it says down there. And we have carried our 125 tons to orbit while giving enough height and a good location for the separation of the flyback boosters. So, uh, there you have it. It's an uh, interesting thing. It's an interesting thing to think about. <laughs> um, I mean, we don't even have Starship here. Uh, we've got 125 tons to orbit. So what does that say? Hmm. 340 tons altogether, for reference. So, yes. I'm thinking of developing this into a really big space shuttle. Is that a good idea? I don't know. We'll think about that. Anyway. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.